Greetings and welcome back once again. What's so funny, Daddy? You always laugh. Daddy. <laughs> I'm laughing. Good morning, peoples. Good morning. You guys make the drive into work a little bit quicker. Before I know it, boop, I'm there. Without yelling at babies early in the morning. Pray everybody's doing well. Pray everybody's doing well. I wanted to talk about a hot button topic that often gets people riled up. Get them mad. Big mad. And I'm like, oh, let's look at why we get big mad about the word submission or to submit. And somebody had posted, I don't really follow that particular show because it's kind of eh. But somebody had posted the, the people who still broadcasting from their house mm, on the reel. And the woman who says that when she gets married, she's engaged, that she will be submitting to her husband. And it, it, they, the way they shared it, it was like, woo. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. You know? So I took the liberty, people, to meditate on this as I uh, was doing my elliptical this morning. Doing a little stretching and trying to keep limber. And uh, so the word, the actual word in the English language, right, is a compound word sub and mit it's two words what I found very interesting about this compound word is that the suffix or the latter part of the word mit is a uh, abbreviated version of the word mitier which is uh, means to send forth right to I don't even want to lie and say what it means it says to send forth or to let go why is this interesting, Amuna? Very, very interesting. If we look at the the principle of sending forth and letting go of something, who has the power in that situation? Is that a give situation or is that a take situation? Again, we're looking at the word submit. Breaking down the word, kind of getting the foundational uh, understanding of it, and then we can build from there. So... The, we know sub means to go under, right? Like submarine, subverse, subvert, all of these words right here. When you look up the modern definition, it's talking about to yield to authority or to yield. Um, like I'm driving right now. I'm yielding. We have signs that says yield. Uh, so there's different ways in which this, quest, this submit can look uh, based on the definition alone, right? But this latter part of the word mit or mitier or to send or to let go lets us know who's doing the action. Who has the power to do the action, basically. It has to be the person who's yielding. That's the person who has the power, but they actually, they transfer that power to the other individual for a specific person, purpose or reason. Now, so we submit all day long but in different capacities. For instance, if you are looking for a job, the question is, how many applications did you submit? Right? If you even know someone at the job, they say, hey, just still submit an application. So you're looking for something, but you, from someone else, right? The person who you're submitting to is receiving. So in, in the initial part of the action, you are the giver. You have to give something. You have to give up something in order to now receive something from the place that you're giving up. When we're talking about principles of masculine and feminine, I thought it was just weird this morning. I'm like, wait a minute. If the person who is submitting initially is the giver and initially the giver is a, a masculine, masculine energy, in return, they're looking for something. But when we think about submission off the bat, the thought is that it is negative or it is less than or lower than or um, lowly. And that's because of the way that what is being received as a, re as a response to giving, right? 
So you submit to, say, authority. People submit to government. Now, if the entity, the thing that you're submitting to is foul <laughs> or is corrupt or exploits that permission that you're giving them in some way, then it becomes a nasty and dirty word. For instance, if you submit your application to a, a, a disreputable company, now you're you and you get hired now by working at this disreputable company you have become sullied by association right so oftentimes the the pressure in society is put on the person to force them by coercion or by um force in a lot of cases or by manipulation to submit why because ultimately the power is with the, that individual to do so and this is why we see people having to do all of these means propaganda this that means all of these things all of these means to get the person to acquiesce because they have the power <laughs> very 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 interesting in the actual word itself it's showing you who has the power now as it relates to when people are talking about feminism or when people are talking about women in particular, because oftentimes you see women are supposed to submit or children are supposed to submit. Um, when they say that, hey, somewhere along the line, submission began to equal giving up of a power that leaves one vulnerable. Hey, greetings and welcome everybody who just joined us. Right? So now you, you give because you have to give up this power to a certain degree or yield to someone else who now is going to be making the decisions or making the choices that you are now in agreement with. This is what we see the whole voting system right now. It's, it's saying, hey, you need to vote. What are you doing? You're submitting your choice who you would want to govern you. This is what people are going to be doing. Right? And, and by doing so, you are agreeing to their government. But who initially has the power? The people. If they didn't, then people wouldn't be spending millions of dollars on campaigns for you to recognize them, for you then to vote for them to accept their authority. It's very weird. But again, uh, something to examine. Now, this word mit or metier or to send forth, I'm like, wait a minute, Eluna. <laughs> I started looking up. I'm all on the elliptical looking stuff up like, wait a minute. It is, the, it is the, the suffix for a number of words like, I had to write it down so I don't forget, permit or submit, commit, remit, transmit, summit, admit, words have this sending forth or to show you that okay maybe it's not just in this particular words when they were constructing these words and putting because you know they say english is a bastardized language right so it's borrowing bar from french and old english and latin i think that mitier is latin if i'm not mistaken i have to double check that one right it's borrowing these concepts from all of these different places and putting them together so in all of these words when you say somebody permits something, you are submitting an application so that you can acquire a permit, right? So who has the power to give you a permit, to send forth this permission for you to do X, Y, and Z? I'm using all of these examples to show that initially with the topic of submission and the truth about it, it is that the person who the person, the individual, is the one who has the power to give their power up. Everybody has an opportunity to make a choice. Now, when the other party, people, entity wants to take that choice, they're going to use certain means of which to do so. Like I said, coercion, manipulation, um, uh, uh, what's the a blackmail, force. Uh, extortion there's all of these different power control mechanisms that people use to take your power from you but ultimately it is for us to so I guess for I guess what I'm trying to say here is for us to recognize 
that the initial state of submission is to understand that you have the power. The individual has the power. And they then begin to reason at what I want to submit. Whom do I want to confer some of this power onto and for what reason? Now, in a lot of these relationships, because the power has been abused or because the person has been left wanting, it's like working for, or it's like going into a company that you have no coverage, you have no insurance, you have no, you know, you know, you, you're not even on the books. And they're like, hey, submit. You're like, whoa, I don't even really trust you. There has to be a level of trust that whatever part of me that I'm submitting to, what, what, what I need is my needs are going to be met. And so when the needs are not met, then the person begins to what? Pull back their power because the trust is compromised. I don't really trust that this, this, then this is going to happen. There's a lot of people running out here wanting people to submit to broken paradigms. Like I'm going to, I'm going to pour my water. I'm going to give you some of my power. And then it's just leaking all these cracks in the vessel. And then they're like, just do it because I'm a vessel. Like, but you're broken though. <laughs> so you, all of, all of what I need is just so like all on the floor. What are you going to do? People, we're not really, we're, 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 we're being very, uh, let me see what I'm trying to say. We are not necessarily reasoning with understanding what's happening before us like i saw a post and i shared it only for conversation to hear what the people are saying that feminists something to the degree that think that working for uh, what did they say working for uh an employee is liberation but working for your the household is oppression something to that degree is what it said uh, and i'm like I just shared it. I didn't share my thoughts. I just shared what it said. Let me see what's going on here while I'm at the stoplight. Hey, Shalom, love, what's going on? Etymology of words, because I don't take any language I face about. Right, you have to look up the etymology of words. Absolutely. This is why David called the Mosai his Azir Kanigdo, wrongfully translated as helpmate. Right, so this submission, because we see for those who subscribe to the narrative in Genesis and the text, people just say, you're just supposed to submit to this person. You're supposed to submit to X, Y, and Z. And what we find is that when people are off and they give their power to people who are off, they end up over the ledge with no aid and no help and no rescue because they gave, they yielded to the wrong people, the wrong thought process, the wrong system. And they ended up in danger. They, themselves, their family. You understand what I'm saying? And you're like, whoa, whoa how did I get here? <laughs> so there's a certain degree of uh, awareness that you have to have that just by submitting to someone, that doesn't secure you from like, oh, I'm in obedience. Yeah, but now you're jacked up because you submitted to, to an errant thought. You submitted to errant doctrine. You submitted to something that that principally is off. And there's some people that say, well, that's, that's how you're just going to be saved. By submitting to X, Y, and Z. And it's like, mm, okay. Right? Now, submitting to the will of the creator, that's something different. Submitting to the will of man, no matter what it is. Man, unless that man or that system has become your God. Whoa, somebody threw all their clothes out on the side of the street. Unless that system has become your God, where you're submitting at all cost, now you have another power before the creator. Now you got another problem on your hands. It says, have no other powers before the creator, right? Make no graven images of the likeness in the heavens above, the earth beneath, or the waters under the earth. Now, if man is on the earth... That will mean that submitting wholly to man will make you an idol worshiper to a certain degree. Because this man now becomes your God. Mm. People be like, nah, okay. Well, prove me wrong. <laughs> prove me wrong then. 
If somebody can make up anything, everything they say is golden. Nothing is questioned, right? You give all, all of your will, all of everything all, to this person, this thing, this deed. The person now has become a deity to you. And now you have gotten yourself from, oh, it says submit to idol worship. We see that in many cases. So, for instance, like, I don't know how many people have watched, like, the Jim Jones back documentary a while ago. Where he, um, you know, first he started off in America. Then he ended up going down to Guyana. And then he indoctrinated the people to the degree where they submitted their will onto him. Right? And he exploited their weaknesses. And... Even if they had an inkling like, oh, this doesn't feel right, they did everything he said without question. And then when now the authorities are coming in, he convinces them to drink the Kool-Aid. I don't know how many people have seen that documentary or read or remember anything about the Jim Jones situation. That's crazy. That man became their idol. And everything he said was golden. And they ended up losing their life because he had convinced them that, hey, mister, just wait, my friend, you there behind me. He convinced them that uh, he was going to be their savior. So these, we have examples like this so that we can understand that there has to be a limit. There are people who, and, and you see it a lot in the, the situation of pastors or people who are leading people. That's why I don't take this this whole talking to people lightly. There are people who don't care and will say anything. Like for instance, in that same clip this morning about the woman uh, on that uh, that someone shared on here, the 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 I forgot the name of the uh, next girl. I don't remember the name. Anyway, the woman says, "Oh, the people cannot use the Bible to support submission because the Bible was written in a time so long ago." This is what she says. And the Bible actually says, this is a quote in Leviticus, that you somebody can get stoned for any eating shrimp. I'm like, chapter and verse. <laughs> Lady, somebody could get stoned for eating shrimp? Chapter and verse, please. But she's on a platform big enough that she can say something like that. And if you're not, you're going to submit to the fact that she's on TV and you're not. Therefore, what she just said was accurate and correct. Chapter and verse, lady. <laughs> Wait, to find me the chapter and verse that it says that you're going to get stoned for eating shrimp. Shout out to those who just joined us. So basically, yeah, I was just sharing the etymology of the word. That word, mitzir, appears in many other words and it indicates, specifically in the word submit, that the person who is doing the submitting is giving something. Because you're sending. When it says to send or to let go, to send, what are you sending? And then that's something else for us to look at. When you're sending, what are you sending? What are you giving? If I send you something, I can send you energy. I can send you prayers. I can send you love. I can send you food. I can send you a letter. I can send you words. What are you sending in this submission? What are you giving? What are you letting go of? So what happens is in today's space and time, there's an argument over you are not giving me what historically it's my right for you to give me. So you have a lot of people uh, wrangling submission out of other people you know manipulating submission out of other people but the, here's the reality when somebody is giving you it is for a reason if they have to go and do the very same things that they are giving you their submission for then they no longer are giving it to you <laughs> if the, okay for instance if they are submitting because you are in return giving to them security or a place to live or um, food or clothing, then they are submitting part of their power, part of their capacity to provide for themselves. They're submitting it onto you because with the promise that you are going to return in some type of kind. You submit your application 
to the real estate agent because the thought is that they're going to give on to you the opportunity to live somewhere. So you submit your rent or even remit your rent to the, the landlord and the landlord then is going to give you a place to stay. There's some reciprocity in that conversation. People running around talking about submit. Then the next question is for what? What's it? They're going to ask the question, what's in it for me? <laughs> yeah, understand? It's not, it's not crazy or it's looking at what we're talking about. You're telling the person. So the person says, how about I don't give up my power? And how about I just go get it for myself? And they're like, but wait a minute, you're not supposed to be doing that. Wait a minute, you're not supposed to be doing that. Hold on. But at the same time, the person is saying, I'm not going to go get it for you. You got to get it for yourself. So they're like, wait a minute. I'm going to And I still got to go get it for myself. So, and nothing is coming back. No protection. No real guidance. You got me following, doing whatever you wilt. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. Do what thou wilt. We know where that leads. Right? You got me following whatever you wilt. And I'm going to go do it too. See, this is where it's a bad deal, y'all. This is where we at right now, where people are having these gender wars because the very root of some of these things, we have lost an understanding of what it is and what it's supposed to look like. You provide, parents provide for their children, food, clothing, shelter, guidance, love, emotional stability, and in return, the children submit to the will of the parents because they are provided for in a capacity that they cannot provide for themselves. And when they get to a certain age, like the most I told the Abraham up from your father's house and I will take you to a place. Because they are getting a provision, therefore they have to give over something. It's it's reciprocity, it's give and take. Uh-oh, this thing flicked over. No, I'm tripping, I'm bugging. Am I bugging or am I tripping? Am I tripping or am I bugging? So again, we submit all day, every day in one capacity or another. And the places that we begin to refuse, you have to examine whether or not the system is broken. For instance, somebody may be without a job. They know that they need a job or some kind of income to sustain themselves. So they don't necessarily have the capacity to, in their mind, to create income by themselves. So they go to places of power, places of authority, and submit their application. That means I'm letting you know that I desire to be under this organization because you're going to provide for me provisions. If you are then uh, going around volunteering, you are under the impression that I will not be compensated in money, but I may be compensated in social currency. I may be compensated in another way. But who gives applications to jobs that don't have the capacity to hire? Uh, let me check out what's going on here. Greetings and welcome to those who just joined us. I'm hearing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To those who just joined us, welcome. Right, so just, so basically, again, for those who just joined us, the word is two words put together. Sub and miti air. Look it up, M-I-T-T-E-R-E, -T -T -E, okay? And this word means to send or to let go. Manumit, permit, submit, commit, remit, transmit. When we're transmitting, we're sending forth energy. Right now, Facebook is transmitting my broadcast. I'm sending forth words. I'm sending forth energy, right? When we turn on our radio, it's transmitting something, the base word. When we're committing something, what are we doing? Just like the word communion, there's the C-O-M, calm, the coming together and then mit. So that means, when you commit yourself to something, I'm sending forth my energy to this thing and making and bonding myself to this thing, to this idea, to this whatever. So when we, when people are committing themselves, they have to commit themselves both one to another. 
because if only one commits then there's only loy it, it, it's there's only loyalty on one side for instance you may have the employee who's committed to the employer but you're a temp they're committed to you but you don't have no status you just a temp you don't got no coverage like i said right but i need you to fully i need you to be fully loyal though <laughs> you know like what hold on hold on wait a minute oh, i'm confused we have to look at power dynamics when we're talking about why people are uncertain about certain situations that they may find themselves in. Why people may renege or why people may be hesitant to uh, fully engage. Instead of just, oh, you need to submit. You, you, um, you Jezebel, you unrighteous. Come on, that's all played out. That's like, it's 2020. It's time to start really sitting down and looking at situations and trying to really understand okay where is the breakdown what is going on here right where is this thing not working start trying to diagnose diagnose stuff instead of just the old school you know uh propagandizing people guilt tripping people uh wrangling people into thought processes that's not working they said, give me a reason. Give me a reason. There's people who say, I have I have no want of anything. I am good. And, and, and my husband makes sure I have what I need. Therefore, usually it goes like that. The conversation usually goes like that. Therefore, but in some areas, some areas the man may not be proficient in. He's not necessarily proficient in childbirth. He's never experienced childbirth. Therefore, how does one to submit to the masculine energy during childbirth? This is what has led to, and I've said this before, this is what has led to high numbers of surgery, high numbers of C-section, high numbers of, you know, all kind of injurious things during childbirth because you're submitting to the thought process of somebody who can never be as proficient in this area as you are because even though they have book knowledge they do not have experience because they've never given birth so when they say lay down on your back and that is counterintuitive and you submit to it you end up down the rabbit hole no yeah maybe so let me get from behind this truck come on people saying so yeah this this is it's like every day we get up and it's like the same the same the same come on now break it on down now break it on down make it plain so we can be like oh okay 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 instead of be like it's her it's him it's her it's him it's this person's fault it's that person's fault okay what's going on here <laughs> why does this person not feel safe why does this person feel entitled? It, listen, if you have a company, like all these places, and no one comes to work for you, let me know how that works out. So to think that one is better than the other, you cannot have a good... What, what would Amazon be without any people working? Without no delivery? Without no processing center? Without all of these things? What would Facebook be without the tech support? Without all of the things that needs to run the company? So when people think, oh, because I am, quote, in power, there's a responsibility that comes with, quote, being in power. And if you don't want to take responsibility, stop asking for power. <laughs> Why keep asking for power and you don't want to take responsibility? That don't make no kind of sense. Something go down talking about you had a choice. I didn't tell you to do that. That was you. Like, that's the kind of stuff would make people be like, all right, cool, bet, no problem. If, if at the end of the day, I'm going to be responsible for everything anyway, even though I took your instruction. This is why when I go to places like the mister, you are coming really hard, okay? When I go to places like doctors and stuff, like Dred, you're making a suggestion. Because ultimately, if I take your suggestion, I then am responsible for whatever I have done. It's like when, they, when the most I said... Adam, what is this that you have done? He said this, the woman you gave me, but it wasn't enough to say it was the woman you gave me. You responsible, the woman responsible for her part, and the serpent is responsible for his part. 
Yeah? Hold on, peoples. Hold on. Early today, yesterday, I was running a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, peoples. We got like two seconds. Go ahead, babe. Mommy's coming. Let me see what you guys got going on here. Yay! What's going on, y'all? Good morning. Oh, breaking down. Yep. So it's accountability. Responsibility comes with accountability. If if you're running around asking people to submit, you know, doing all of this stuff for people to submit, be prepared to take responsibility for those who have submitted under your authority. One of the issues is, like I said before, if people are not safe, they're going to have a problem submitting. If they don't feel uh, protected, they're going to have problems submitting. Even in a relationship. If the woman is out and the man uh, lets people or do anything or carry on any kind of way or make her feel threatened, she's going to have a problem submitting. If, if she's in want of things, she's going to have a problem submitting because at some point she's going to know that she has submitted onto you and then begin to utilize it to get the things that she needs. I know it sounds like I ain't calling you a gold digger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the reality is if provision deals with how grounded I feel in my environment. How taken care of I feel. So if the person is in lack and in want, they're, not, they're going to be uneasy. And the love... Love is also a giving action, right? Love is provision. So some people want you just to love on emotion. That could just be a trauma bond. That baby come out, and how do you show that baby you love it? The first thing that baby's looking for is nourishment, breast milk. He ain't even open the eyes yet. The baby just like, eyes is closed, like, whoa, where's the mother? I need you to give me something. I need you to give me nourishment. I need you to give me uh, protection. I need you to make me feel safe. I know it sounds like a lot, everybody. It sounds like a whole lot. But I'm just here to tell you. Let's break it down. Anywho. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what are yours. Uh-oh, where my little card went? When we're using these words, let's try to define them. So that we can have a baseline. Hey, where you going, friend? Huh? What are you looking for? Oh. Wait. I'm coming just now. So that we can have a, a, right, a baseline understanding so that we're not arguing over definition. Let's first define what we're talking about and then we can go from there i talked about standards yesterday there's no one of the things in miscommunication because there's no standard huh there's no standard there's no baseline understanding of this is what it means to submit this is the definition of submit not how i feel or what i think it's supposed to look like or this 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 you have a giver and a receiver right you have, a, you have somebody who's sending forth something and somebody who's receiving something. And then the person who's received something now has to send something forth and the person who now has to receive. And it's this, reciprocity. Going and coming, going and coming, going and coming. And it's something that happens on a daily basis. Just my thoughts. Anywho, thank everybody for tuning in. Yeah, be truthful about the roots of the relationship. We think it's supposed to just look one way. What do you want to have for dinner today? Um, uh, lamb chops and potatoes. Okay. 
And we think that that leave it to beaver, that projection of what's on, you know, okay, my Lord. And people are like, well, why don't you call him Lord? And why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? It's like people are jonesing off of, again, when the oppressed becomes the oppressor. There's a level of jonesing off of the, or power tripping off of what we've seen others do. And for some reason, we think that that's going to empower us and make us feel better about our estate, Right? And so the man is, this is what he's lacking. This is the area in which he's lacking. And so it's like, I'm demanding this. And then when the, when the feminine resists, then it becomes this tug of war. Yet still, you sp we spend more time demanding submission than even being in the position to be submitted to. Do you know all of the things that one has to have to begin to receive applications? for employment if you have a business you had to have incorporated the business get to tax EIN of the business find a building for the business furnish the business establish what business you're having to begin with <laughs> processes within your business right the operations of the business all of these things you would have had to already establish before you are even open for business. And people are like, I'm taking application and submit. And then they go over there and they're like, yo, well, what, 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 what do you have? I ain't got nothing. What the box had you taking applications for? This is one of the beefs that the people have with Umar Johnson, right? This whole Uma Johnson saga that has been happening for years is he's taking applications. He's saying that there's a school, but they, the school hasn't materialized to the degree that he's accepted application, uh, applications and monies that people have submitted. You see? So when we don't manifest that which we profess, it creates a trust issue and people begin backing away from the conversation. And questioning whether or not you are in the position that or you are qualified to be in the position that you keep trying to get people to accept you in. Vanessa says, I've never heard anyone break it down like this. Oh, hallelujah, Vanessa. Hallelujah. Break it down. Make it plain, everybody. So with that said, thank everybody for tuning in. Look the word up. Let me give y'all the other words to look up, too, because I think it's just... Uh-uh. Where did my paper go? Ooh. Oh, the baby took the paper inside. Remit, summit, submit, um, commit. Uh just look if you look up all of the words <laughs> that has this sending forth, this letting go, manumit, all of these words have to will begin to show you who has the power. And then we can begin to understand the, 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 the dynamic. Because understanding the power dynamic helps to understand when that dynamic breaks down. So that we can go in and begin to fix these areas. And this is why oftentimes... I, I, one more meme. One more meme. Because these memes be having me going. One of the memes says, when a man gets money, he thinks about... Um, showering his wife with gifts or something but when a woman gets money she feels that she doesn't need a man and I'm like this is very interesting so the thought is that when the man gets the money he's thinking about the woman but when the woman gets the money she's thinking that she doesn't need the man on the surface people begin to argue like yeah it's true because the independent woman she goes out and she doesn't need the man because she's independent and blah 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 if you look at principle, if you look at the biblical narratives, for me, it's a blueprint. So I look at the biblical narratives. Adam's conversation after the fall was, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread, right? Bread is sustenance. Bread is what keeps you alive, okay? His portion was provision, okay? Her portion was to stand over and against him and help to balance him in his position that was initially man should not it, i'm not man shall live by bread alone initially it's not good that man should be alone right so she's supposed to provide this balance 
post the whole eating and munching, <laughs> right? Now it says that her desire shall be submitted unto him, right? Her, or her desire shall be towards him. And then it tells you about her portion and how her portion is going to be, um, let me close this door a little bit. How her portion is going to be compromised in the fact that if she's going to labor in this area, both of them are striked with labor. She's going to labor in this bringing forth child and he's going to labor in bringing forth the fruits of the earth. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult than the initial, than it was intended to be. So when, when she leaves her portion to go do his portion, the reality is he is supposed to be the provider, giving her the provisions on, the, on which she takes and she elevates and then she gives back and then he gives more and then she takes and elevates and he, but then when he's like either withholding or he's stingy or he feels as though this is what I'm going to use to control you. Right? It, when somebody's using this as a means, like I told you, to forcibly allow you to submit, a means of control, and she then realizes, you know what? I can actually provide for myself. And I and I won't have to submit to someone who at this point is not necessarily capable of doing the things I need. Then she opts to go and do it for herself so that she doesn't basically she removes the middleman. So concerning that meme, he, to a certain degree, may still be in his principle, but if he's abusing that space, which historically, let's be honest, let's be honest, historically, the space of the provider has been exploited, right? It has been exploited. So then she has come to a point where she says, guess what? I can go get the food for myself. There's one point where there was a blackout where there were jobs that she couldn't do. So there was a male dominated space and in certain countries that's still the case where you are not allowed into the workforce. You are not allowed into the work field because once if the man dominates that space, then he controls the female. In some places don't drive. In some places, cause you know, don't go outside and do da 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 da. That means you, I can, can still hold the power which is the power to stay alive. If somebody's controlling your opportunity to earn, they're controlling the, the, your ability to stay alive, to eat, to have shelter, to have protection. And if that person exploits that and, and, and loses the trust of the person, now the person says, you know what, I'm going to go do it for myself so that no one will ever bop, 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 bop again. So we have to be honest. Stop blaming feminism. Stop blaming this thing, that thing. This, honest is each person taking personal responsibility of where historically we may have dropped the ball. Because the blame game is whack. It's 2020. We're like, yo, we dropped the ball. We dropped the ball. Women exploit their position. Men exploit their position. Right? Okay. In what ways? Bomb and bomb and bomb. Okay. Now how do we fix this? How does it look like when it's going correctly? What does it look like? Anyway, let me run inside. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. I pray everybody have a blessed day. You know what I mean? Something to think about. Let me see if I missed anything. No, I don't think so. All right, everybody, bless up.